It's May 18, 2021. I bring this regular meeting to council. It is 7.30 p.m. Result of the agenda for the May 18, 2021 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Result of the minutes of the May 4th, 2021 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Receptions and delegations. Tonight we have with us Ms. Medwood, Ms. Karina Medwood. Um, so with that, just remind the time limit, we do have a long agenda tonight as well, um, usually about 10 minutes we allow. Uh, so I know that you had some questions that you had sent out a little while ago, I think that you also re received an email back with some of the um, uh, bylaw information or uh, further information. So uh, because uh, you're here as a delegation, I will let you continue on. Awesome. I feel really far away. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. <laughs> just want to make sure. Okay, um, so I do appreciate all the answers. It will totally speed up my little process here. Um, the one thing I just want to kind of clarify, and I kind of touched on it in the budget meeting, and it is kind of the first thing on here that I knew would kind of cover the budget one, but when I was asking about the bank accounts versus the accounting ledger accounts, you did answer my question that no, you don't have separate accounts, you just have one main operational account that you work from. Where I was trying to go with that is, I think it was late 90s, early 2000, uh, Winnipeg, because I lived there, had blizzard after blizzard after blizzard for about two or three years running, and they ran significant deficits with their snow removal budgets. And they, as a council, I believe, decided to create a separate banking account for snow removal because essentially what they did is, for example, last year you guys budgeted 100,000 for snow removal. You ended up spending 110,000. It happens, it's mother nature, it's like playing the craps table, you never know what you're gonna get. So I just wrote down some quick numbers so I don't get messed up here. Next year for 2021, we had budgeted $103,000. Say, for example, the actual expenditure is only 100000 In that accounting, that would present as a surplus of $3,000, but it would just be absorbed into the general account and other expenses. If there was a separate snow removal account, where I was going at is that money could then stay, that $3,000 surplus could stay in that snow removal account. So if in 2022, you budgeted, say, $106,000 as account for Trudeau's wasteful carbon tax. And we don't, with that surplus, you would actually have $109,000 to go towards snow removal. So if in 2022 you actually had another overage deficit and you spent, say, $110,000 again, money you have sitting in the bank is 109000 which means your deficit is only actually 1000 versus $4,000. So that's where I was trying to get at with that and whether or not that's something that council or administration or the wizard up there, the financial guy, <laughs> can maybe look at or consider because I totally get that it's a crapshoot budgeting for snow removal. But what I kind of frustrated at and what I'm going to kind of touch on in a couple points here in regards to the answers is I guess the level of service based on the policy. I don't honestly feel like we're always hitting this policy and that there's a lot of things being lost in the shuffle because section two that talks about... Can I, can I just interrupt you yeah. for one minute? Just going back, because you, you, you asked a question there, okay. and, and, and you're going on, and I think that we, we might end up not being able to answer that question, or maybe not answering it, or 
are forgetting to go back to it. So I think it's important maybe to address that first and then you can kind of go on to what the policy states or what you're asking about the policy. So as far as what the City of Winnipeg does as far as accounting all that goes, I'm not too sure exactly because the City of Winnipeg does have fall under different rules as far as municipal. A lot of it is concentrates outside the city of Winnipeg and mm -hmm. they fall under some different rules. I don't know if that uh, comes to their uh, accounting or not, but I can't speak on that. Uh, maybe our CFO can speak on that because he probably would know about that. As far as ruling, like say if you had a, a surplus, like you said, from line say yeah. A, which is snow removal, and we had a surplus that, or we, we showed that, not, I wouldn't say a surplus, but let's say if we spent less than what we projected to spend, and you're asking if we would actually roll that monies that we actually projected over to uh, the following year. From my understanding is that our budgets run year to year. We have to close off accounts and, and whatever, the whole everything as a whole ends up being a surplus. And the council has a decision to either use some of those monies uh, that goes into nominal surplus, and then some of those monies also, if we can, can go towards if we want to add it to the budget the following year, okay? Um, I'm on the right track with that. Yeah, there, there is there is a way we could do it, and Terry can correct me if I'm wrong, but we could create a, a snow removal operating reserve. So that okay. would be any surplus specifically if snow removal gets put in that reserve, and that can only be expended in operations of the snow removal account. That is how that would work. But if we go over and there's nothing in the reserve, obviously, that's where the rest of the surplus would have to okay. come, if there was one, or that's it. Right. And I'm not under any impression that this is going to literally solve the potential for deficits. I'm just saying it might cushion the blow on some of those years that we end up running over significantly versus having a bit of a cushion in years where we're not meeting that budget target and being able to cushion that blow. Because it is a, a crapshoot and I get that. Um, okay, so... The three goals, I still don't understand why I say two, three, four instead of one, two, three, but anyways, are to maintain streets in a safe driving condition. I by no means expect them to be so clear that they're dry as bone like we're looking at right now. We're in northern Manitoba, we are going to have snow. But there's a difference between having snow or roads that have snow on them but are still drivable by all modes of transportation. That includes small cars. And I know I get very frustrated on the times, well, let's bring up April. It took a week to clear those residential streets. I live on 2nd Street. When I drive down tonight to turn at the stop sign, that last snowstorm for two days, I was in a position where I either had to exceed the recommended speed limit in a school zone so as not to get stuck in a drift, or get stuck in a drift. <laughs> so, I don't see how that is a safe road condition. And if that's me in a small car, you're basically saying anybody who gets around with a wheelchair, a scooter, motorized scooter, or their own two feet is going to also have an unsafe, if they're even able to get on the road, commute to anywhere they go. So another side question to that is, did the handy van run and operate during that week? before the streets were all plowed and cleared? Like, will it run under any road conditions? Uh, we will try, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it wasn't closed for snowfall or anything. Okay, well that's good to know because I guess they have a potential alternative if they can't get the little scooter or wheelchair out. Um, the second goal is to perform snow removal and ice control tasks in a timely manner. So I'm just going to skip to the point that's further on here, but you mentioned with, when I was asking about the airport commission and with regards to um, April's clearing of snow, you indicated here that uh, airport has recently taken precedent over town streets. So if it's taking us 48 hours to clear the airport and that's delaying any work being done on the public streets, 
then to me, that is actually affecting goal three of performing these tasks in a timely manner, as well as goal four, which is to perform all maintenance tasks equally and in the best interest of the town of Swan River's taxpayers. So I understand the importance of clearing the airport and being able to have light flights come in and leave, absolutely. But if doing that holds up snow removal for the town for 48 hours or more, then I'm thinking we do need to be looking closer at that section and policy because if this were a year where we had blizzard storm after blizzard storm after snowstorm, at what point do the town streets get cleared if the airport always comes first and by the time you've done the airport, you're going right back to the airport because another snowstorm came in? So, what, that, what's, what's the question then? The question is, what are we going to be doing to meet goals three and four in regards to clearing the streets, especially if we now are putting the airport ahead of town streets? Because it took a week, at least five days or more, in April to get those streets cleared enough that it, there was safe travel for all modes of vehicles. Yeah, like it's not out at the airport for 48 hours, it's out there for a couple hours. Uh, I know there was a lot of wind with that last snowstorm, so there was a few streets that they had to go back to, that they cleared them, just came back. Mm -hmm. uh, so that kind of slowed things down. Uh, and like, while it's snowing at the airport, we're not you know, continuously there, but we wait until the snow falls to clear the airport out. Uh, but we just do it over here, and we do it quickly before my flight kind of thing. But uh, that snowstorm was mainly because there was some really large drifts, like there was three foot drifts or four foot drifts, and on my air had like a five foot drift. So. I know, there was one, a big one on 2nd Street between 8 and 9. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't so like, get through with my little was, car. <laughs> you know, the streets were, like, the street was cleared, and then they kept blowing, and I went back, and the drifts had reformed on that street kind of thing. So that would be part of the reason why it seemed like too small, because they think we're getting cleared. Fair enough. Um, you stated in your reply when you were uh, talking about, I think, the budget and how it was spent through the 2020 year. It says a large contributing factor was Main Street was cleared in January and February of 2020, which contributed to 79% um, of the budget being expended by uh, April. I thought Manitoba Highways was responsible for the street. We have a new agreement. We have a recent agreement with uh, Manitoba Infrastructure that the town will clear Main Street. So that's changed. Because in this policy that I'm referencing, it still indicates that Manitoba Highways is responsible for Main Street. So that might be another thing that needs to be revised and updated in here. That's correct. Yeah, they explained it to the side. There's no way I'm going to update that. Okay. Am I, am I still the authority for Main Street? What was that? Am I still the authority for Main Street? But we're using some of our budget dollars to contribute to cleaning. Because we have an agreement with them and they pay us back a certain portion of money for that work. Okay. The, I don't believe the snow removal policy as it's written now. Because uh, my recollection of it is that they are responsible for Main Street and the whole bypass route. Yeah, there has to be an update. Yeah. Uh, the next one was, uh, oh, with regards to Taylor School, it's not because I live on the street, it's simply because I live on the street that I can witness it, but I watch parents in the morning and at the end of school pull up, they can barely get to the curb because the streets haven't been cleared yet. They are struggling to get little one in car seat out of the back, trudge through the snow safely to get to the school to pick up their other littles to then come back and load them into the vehicles. So if they can't even get to the curb because the street's not clear, we've got mom with more than one little she's responsible for. If she 
trips, falls, slips, in a build up of snow. Like, I only really kind of see two ways of dealing with that. Unless you're going to put a parking ban in place and enforce it so that there's no parking allowed on that street, or find the time, because it used to get cleared faster than what it has the last two years. So I, that's why I feel there, uh, you did mention that there was a change to the road maps in 2018. And that's roughly probably about the time that I'm noticing the difference from when I moved in there. Because initially, I used to see that clear, that street clouds. And I remember when I first moved in that house, I'm like, damn, I picked a good location. Because it was clear first thing in the morning for the buses and the kids. And now I watch them struggle. There's traffic going back and forth there so people can get in line. They don't just use night where it's recommended or it's suggested. They're in front of the school, both sides of the street, neither side can get to the curb. You're now narrowing that driving route and we're struggling to climb through snow drifts and back up snow. So that's my point with that. Like after a snowfall, by all means, any one of you, please go hang out in front of Taylor School or at the end of the day and observe what that looks like. Because to me, it looks like an accident waiting to happen. And that's what I'm mostly concerned about. If you only do from 7th to 9th, and literally that strip right in front of the school, you wouldn't have me in here complaining, that's for sure, even though you missed in front of my house. But that's what my big concern is. We have too many parents stopping in front of there and handling littles that, to me, it's a potential risk. And those are some of our most vulnerable people up there. So there's no real question. It's kind of an answer, but that's clarifying my point. So just a comment on that. I, I definitely discussed Taylor School before, and as far as you did mention, cars on the side of the street. Uh, it was a public works department who've been working at kind of simplifying the map uh, so that we can have it on the website. Maybe zone one will be the uh, primary zones. Yeah. And the residential will be split into three zones. And uh, so then, you guys are operating on the website, will be the location that we're in. So it'll be like zone one and zone two. And then the next day, finishing zone one and zone three. Because for zone one, the guys work in downtown as long as they can. But then once cars start to come in for business and stuff, then they kick out to the residential. So it becomes too slow, it's not efficient. So there will always kind of be two zones being worked on. And uh, so we hope, you know, it won't be immediately, but we hope that the advertising and us staying on top of that, that people will escape. I pay attention to this after snowfall. I can hold when they're going to go down my streams. So I can hold in my driveway. And then once they're done, then I can park on the street again. And then just talking to the forum, there is some cars that uh, our guys have noticed that are on the street for longer than seven days, and there is a bylaw regarding that. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a new forum, so I just be very with him that when the guys notice the car or notice ones that are there, just always are there kind of thing. When the bylaw is open, so we we'll a picture that checks that they are there and make sure that it's moved. Um, so that there's does he talk to tires? Uh, he takes a picture. Can we, can we just stick to, to the sorry. conversation? Because we are heading into about 20 minutes now. Sorry. And uh, we, if you want to have any further questions as far as how the bylaw uh, officer deals with yeah. all that, he can respond to that you know, by email or telephone call. Okay. okay. I'll just jump to the, because um, I'm not sure if that's my next thing up. Oh, actually it is. Parking regulations, bylaw. So, when I read this parking regulations by libel, I interpreted and understood it as basically town has the authority and the right to put signs up at any time, any place, say no parking along the stretch of road or in this area for whatever the designated time you deem necessary. So if we have that, and we're mentioning it even in the snow removal policy, why aren't we going out a few hours or even the night before and putting up signs in zone one and two and saying snow removal from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. 
nobody park on the street. Because it, I mentioned this before, it's easier for the operators and it's safer for the operators if we're not plowing around vehicles. And then it also allows you to get those streets cleared faster and more efficiently on a first run versus potentially having to go back and do a second run. So again, I guess my question is, why aren't we doing that? So that's part of the, we're going to be using that simplified map because, like you mentioned, going out ahead of time doing it and uh, just being in this position and uh, sitting here before that, there's so many times we're watching the snowfall and it's not going to be a big snowfall and then it's just a new comfort or the very constant kind of thing or it misses us. Uh, so that's where we can use the map because you don't have to go to put a bunch of signs out that we're going to be snow plowing and then nothing happens and then a bunch of signs we think it's a more efficient way to do it uh, so we can advertise it so people can just check the website and we okay but they're so, in my area so I need to okay so what I hear you saying you're putting the onus on the residents and that this will be the information will be available publicly yeah that's our plan yeah. okay so if you were to touch base with Winnipeg or Calgary, they have similar situations. Some is done by signs and some of it is the onus on the residents. And if you've got it all mapped out by zones and you know which way they go, then you can simply put the onus on because with Calgary, some of theirs, and again, sometimes they're signing, but there was a bit of an education gap there. But if there was snowfall, then that is your cue to not park on the street until your street is cleared, period. I definitely like your thinking. So if that's the way you're going with these maps, I totally would support that. Let's get it out in the paper, let's get it out to the public, and let's say, you know what? Snow is falling, that's your cue. Do not park on your street until it is cleared, period. If, if you are, get the bylaw officer out there and give him a ticket. Most people, if they know you're coming, will get off the street so they don't get snowed in. That's yeah. for sure. And that's our goal for the start, is just uh, informing people so that they can move their cars. If we do need enforcement because it's still not working, that will be something I'll have to discuss with the council and the transportation. But our first step is making sure we kind of work out the kinks in our system so that we can move by people so that they can see, okay, they are coming in this area, so I should be off the street. And for once, okay, well, I'm not doing my area today, the problem here tomorrow, whatever kind of thing. But to start with that, so we make sure we have our lockdown and the processes. And then, like I say, we have to come to the council before we go out and ticketing relative to that. We still have seven day one, that's over the bylaw. Yeah. But uh, for the maps, we need to make sure we have that working smoothly. We don't want, you know, thought they first not updated and then we want to give them tickets and <laughs> so Fair enough. Make sure we get that. So you know that right now that the, uh, the administration is, and the committee are looking at the snow removal uh, policy and bylaw and so that's still uh, an ongoing working document right now but uh, you'll obviously hear more of that in, in the next few months. But, but yeah, I've known about that for two years since last time. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It's not that's not the only thing that the administration is working on. So there's other items too that they. I know that's why I'm here to follow up. Okay. See where we're at, where we're going. Okay. Uh, let me see the next one. Oh, that pretty much covers it because it talks about that parking ban. Oh, okay. This one. Um. Well, what I think is kind of what we just talked about, because it's about the safety required goal not being met when we're plowing around vehicles. Um, okay, we talked about that one, so we went right to that one. So, yeah, let's move on to recycling and waste management. Okay. Just remember your time, eh? Okay, this okay, is quick. We, we do have a lot of stuff here, so if there's any if anything that's in there that you can actually speak to, uh, Mr. Harvey and Mr. Poole on a separate uh, occasion that might be uh, useful as well. So. Well, this one I don't think will necessarily take as long because 
there's just a couple points. I know you guys are, have some things that works, and Derek has provided me with updates since the last time I was here. My concern is, yes, you are providing a recycling service, but my concern is, especially with seeing these updated stats, um, to me, personally, there's far too much hitting landfill. It might not be hitting our landfill, but it is hitting somebody's landfill. And I think as a collective in a whole, we need to be mindful of how we're managing our waste, whether that's hitting the landfill because it enters a recycling bin or not. Um, you mentioned the not looking at uh, charging for excess waste or whatever, pretend because you're looking to first get the solid waste parts like the recycling ones. I mentioned it before, those bins can hold three to four large garbage bags, which is double potentially what you are already limiting at. So I don't know if when you mention here that you will be waste bin volume will be determined. I don't know if that means because you're looking to see if you can find smaller black bins or if you're going to say you can only fill it half full. But keep that in mind if you are going that way that one of those black bins can hold twice as much as your limit currently is of two garbage cans, which is usually those two big garbage bags. Um, the, you do mention that it's not it's not cost effective to do a big scale compost, but have we looked further into purchasing individual compost bins for households so they can do it themselves? Because if every household, the town can buy them on a wholesale price, charge wholesale costs to a homeowner, and that is a way for them to reduce the amount of waste so that it would make it more they basically have the choice. You can keep throwing it in your garbage and paying more for your waste, or you can compost and meet those waste limits if you want to reduce them. I think the, the private businesses have them for sale for people in town who want to who want to do that. So I know, you know, I guess the, we didn't make a decision not to do it, but if private businesses are supplying them for people who want them. They do, that is correct, but they're also about 80 to 100 bucks plus. Whereas when I lived in Calgary, the town, the city of Calgary bought them obviously for wholesale rate, but they, the wholesale price on them was about twenty five bucks. So to be able to bring in three or four thousand, you can probably get a wholesale price on them for that amount, and then whether you put it on the property taxes as a fee, and that's how you're getting your money, or you have people come in and pay. Personally, I think the way the uh, recycling bins were dropped off, just tack it on the property taxes and drop them off at the door and be done with it. You <laughs> Get your money and get the bins out and less hassle. But that's one way to look at it, but it would also justify you potentially reducing the solid waste amounts and or increasing rates for excess uh, waste amounts. Um, I had the question about, because incineration, you did mention you're still looking into it, so I'm assuming maybe what I was hearing was in regards to incineration providing a power source for a building and whatnot, and maybe that was not feasible, and that you're just looking at incineration in general, potentially. We haven't done an in-depth study, but uh, we just preliminary discussions know that it would be extremely expensive. Yeah. 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 So for the ones that generate power, there's kind of a curve as to where they become, I don't want to cost effective is the right word, but uh, essentially you need to have enough waste coming into them that they're incinerating mm -hmm. it. And uh, the amount of waste we have, we're right at the start. So we're in the very expensive relative to the amount of waste we generate. You're more, again, more cost effective. Yep, no, fair enough. Um, Go ahead. My... Deprimate on time. 
and just a quick addition there, Ms. Smith, with, in regards to that, that is something that the uh, Economic Development uh, Committee, along with RISE and the Chamber of Commerce, is, is working towards as well on a much smaller scale, but uh, looking at some sort of opportunity for that as well. So there are pieces in the works for it, maybe not as large scale as what you're thinking mm -hmm. for uh, for the town, but uh, to start off on some smaller smaller scale for sure. That's wonderful to hear because yes, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> um, the um, plastic bag fan. You indicate here that uh, as time permits, a survey for the commercial users of these bags needs to be accomplished. I, I know the co-op is looking to go bagless with regards to plastic. I think you're switching to paper, if I'm not mistaken. Johnny might be able to answer that one. I am not sure <laughs> if, I, if that's appropriate for me to comment on that at this time, at this table. Um, but according or with my work, we are doing some some integration with plastic and looking at different ways on recycling plastic and eliminating single-use plastic. So that is something we're working on. Um, I don't okay, think so that I did hear correctly, it co-op has something that works okay. So if we can stay on topic here again, and I believe that the federal government does have legislation on single-use plastics. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's coming down the pipe. Yeah. So I know Extra Foods has for a while now been doing the boxes, so they are accomplishing reuse in their boxes that they get in with their freight by reusing them up front so customers can pack their groceries in them. I know Co-op charges for plastic bags, Extra Foods, Giant Tiger, they're all charging. So I guess where I'm at is why are we doing a commercial survey? Why can't we as a government a town, a council, administration, just step up to the plate and say, you know what? We have potential landfill issues. We need to jump on the bandwagon right now on how we're going to reduce solid waste, not only in our landfill, but all the stuff that's floating around the town, floating around in this windstorm. So I guess my question is, <laughs> is this not something we can look to our council and administration to be a leader in, to be the change we wish to see? Yeah, the, we, we definitely want that, but it's more of a courtesy to ask the major users of those items to, to get their thoughts, bring them in. We may not agree with what they think, or, or maybe we will, but it's it's definitely a courtesy <coughs> to our major commercial businesses and town that we use those things. It is, and in which case then I would say, so, um, hit a pattern? Okay. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to have to tell you that I'm going to have to conclude it at that because we do have to move on. I think that we got uh, quite a few notes here taken and, and some uh, opinions or, or suggestions that you have for on the snow removal and also on waste management, including the garbage bag uh, or single use garbage, or sorry, grocery bags is one example. I know that that had been a discussion of item here at this table for several years. In fact, I'm sure that it has been floating around here for the last 10 years and I can remember. Uh, so it's definitely something that has been uh, an item of, of discussion and, uh, and we will continue to uh, work with administration on, on those policies. I know the PAW has one and has had one for a while. So they might be a place to touch base with uh, to see how they went about implementing it. And I think Lynn Lake, Manitoba was the first uh, town in Canada that banned that uh, plastic awesome. bags. Awesome! So, uh, yeah, I know a little bit of history there. So. You see, I learned something new today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, members of council, anything from them at all? So oh, and sometimes when we uh, ban the plastic bags, it would be a little paper, hypothetically, and perhaps that might cause some issues with trees availability of. Yes, what I would like to actually see is just the banning of bags, so you can either buy a reusable one, you can use the boxes, because apparently we have a cardboard issue, waste management type issue, so let's cut those boxes down and reuse them. And at least there's at least a second use to them before they end up in the recycling bin or the landfill. But uh, yeah. 
right. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much for having me. And like I said uh, earlier, that if there is anything else, like some of the other questions or maybe suggestions that you had, you know, you feel free to discuss that at any moment with any member of council or administration. I know that all their doors are wide open and they're willing to discuss. I like to come visit in person for breakfast. <laughs> you know, and that's good too, because you know what, that gives, that everyone has that right and, and uh, it's good to see. Excellent. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Okay, so uh, moving on to uh, communications uh, 6.1. Uh, Mr. Harvey, maybe I can let you move that. Uh, yeah, so the first one is the tabulation of the three lowest digits. And uh, so Manitoba Water Services Board, uh, we have them, and essentially it's as they're under budget and they run things through. And uh, if there's anything that's going to exceed, then they come to us either for a change in scope uh, to reduce it under budget or a change in budget if it's going to go over or a termination of the agreement. And uh, we are under budget. Uh, we have some buffer with that uh, interlink electric and uh, I spoke with the Manitoba Water Services Board project manager and uh, he has worked with interlink electric on similar projects and he's happy with their work uh, so we should be good with that and then, uh, the second one is their uh, conditional acceptance letter so they sent that out and, uh, and they just need to uh, apply to the Mental Water Services Board with the items that are required and then uh, the Mental Water Services Board project manager will set up a meeting. Uh, I'll be attending, uh, AE, the consulting engineer will be attending, the project manager for Mental Water Services Board and the contractor for a kickoff meeting to uh, discuss the project and timelines uh, and get that work done so we Members of council, any questions? Okay. All right, well, thank you on that. Uh, we see we're, there's quite a few bidders. It's interesting to see what quite a contrast we mm have -hmm. there. 6.2 result of the RCP January to March 2021 invoice package dating May the 14th, 2021 be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor White and the Councillor Delorier. We'll just uh, encourage our uh, our CFO to look at them all because I tried to make sense of them and they were certainly beyond me. So I'd encourage uh, interpretation by our, our Chief Financial Officer. What, uh, what are you looking for, sorry? Nothing special, but the whole bunch was uh, quite convoluted. Um, Council yeah, I, I had sent some questions to Mr. Pooler yesterday. You know, my questions are pretty open ended as well because I was having trouble making hides or hair. The part I'm interested in is the, the retro pay. What, what, what actually is our amount? Is it the, because I've seen a, a lowish five figure number and then a highish, you know, I guess high to me six figure number. So, and they're both appear you know based on the way the spreadsheets go and they're not sure what you know some of their codes mean what uh what what our number is what we can expect to pay for for the retro pay yeah i so, can get that back okay to you. if you can get if you can reply back to me and let me know exactly because so unless so anybody based, else knows from what they're reading well so based on that does council want to table this uh um resolution to until you know more information on the details of uh, uh, the documents. The, the invoice as it stands for, you know, it's a regular invoice and a regular amount, I'm fine with that, but there's the last two spreadsheets which refer to the uh, retro pay. I guess th that's what I have a question on, and I don't believe they're part of this invoice. So are they that. part of this invoice? Mr. Guerrita, are they part of this invoice? 
They're just estimates for what we can expect. I cannot say the, the their invoices don't give a detail of how they calculated. Good, I'm not the only one that's in this boat then. Thank, thank goodness. I'm fine with the invoice for what we've been invoiced for. It's the estimate for what's coming that I, that I have questions okay. on. So, well, to inquire. Okay, so we'll find out information on the estimate. So then on the resolution, is any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So we'll have that information perhaps maybe in our next uh, town meeting then? Yeah. 7.7.1, 7 result that the Director of Public Works report be received, moved by Councilor White, second by Deputy Mayor Antoni. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Uh, just a question in regards to uh, last evening's power outage at the water treatment plant. Um, and I understand that there's a, a period of time where it takes the guys to get to the uh, plant to hook up the backup generator. But the uh, natural gas powered booster pump, does that kick in automatically to maintain pressure or is that a separate thing? That's the first thing they start. It's not uh, automatic. But as soon as they get to the plant, that's the first thing they fire up. So it gets us uh, back flowing, right, or gets the pressure up immediately, and then they go to the generator to get everything else up and running. Okay, so is there a quick option that we can look at to uh, get that generator, or not generator, backup pump automated on its startup when the power completely if it goes out? Yeah, I was going to check with the consultant on that. We do have, uh, from our water treatment plant assessment, uh, a generator, like a permanent generator on an automatic transfer switch. And uh, it was kind of the third item in assessment after the distribution pumps of the PLC, because uh, those ones were critical to operating the water treatment plant. Um, so then this one was kind of third in line, so it would be the next one up. But, uh, I could definitely, because I was kind of thinking about that uh, later today, but check with the consultant if there's a way to set up an automatic transfer switch just for the engine. Uh, but it would have to have some control because the engine, there's a throttle that is turned to control the pressure. Um, so I'll just have to check with what the cost to program that would be as opposed to the, just getting the full scale generator. Okay, and last question is, uh, why was there such a delay in getting the uh, boil water advisory, like the thing out today as compared to other ones? Like if we knew that we lost complete pressure last evening, um, why couldn't uh, we get that notice out sooner or have uh, the drinking water officer uh, give us that direction sooner? We have had ones in the past with similar, uh, like a power outage, and we get it back up and running with that pump. And uh, we haven't had boil water advisories. Um, so I was trying to get a hold of the drink water officer. I got a hold of them this morning, and then we're going back and forth looking at the data for what the pressure was and uh, how quick our response was, kind of thing. And we got a different, a newer drinking water officer, and uh, he decided that we should issue a precautionary uh, bowl of water advisory and uh, so we know that going forward with the new drinking water officer to make sure that, you know, as soon as we have a power outage, uh, that we're getting a hold from immediately. Okay. okay, sounds good because like currently putting out an advisory 16 plus hours after the event is like putting milk back in a spilled container. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me if there was any contamination, it's long gone before the advisory even came out. 
Yeah, and, and my thought on that was today that uh, in the future we will have we, we should just uh, have a policy where if we run into a situation like that again, and if we fall below that pivotal area, then we don't even wait for the office of the uh, drinking water. We just go ahead and we just do it ourselves, and then we wait for you know do do our test, do our homework, and all that. And if we cover ourselves off, then we're covered off and we're good to go afterwards. But we just don't wait. But that's my thought, and the committee will definitely be speaking about it here in the short term. Uh, Councillor White and the deputy mayor will talk. Two questions. Uh, this Spruce Products water line, how's that going? Is there a timeline involved? I, sorry. I just did the surveying for that because uh, we got our GPS equipment. So I was just out there earlier this week, and uh, now that's with the consultants. Uh, so that they can give them a pressure and a flow rate based on the pipe size without the booster pump. We want to make sure that uh, they know what that is and they're comfortable with what is going to be coming out of that because it is a long line like they did the approximate pump just based off approximate elevations. But now we have more exact elevations and we've got pressure uh, from a house right to where that line will be. Uh, so we'll get them to run through the calculations so that we can give them, this is what it's going to be, so that they can make sure with their fire insurance that that's sufficient. So best guess, a month, two months? Uh, I would say within a month. So we'll have have a water there in a month? No, no, no. <laughs> we might have them set up so that we have a plan. To okay, do. thank you. The other question is, I see the uh, trailer park has come up again, uh, you meeting with the uh, landowners. Uh, what's happening there? Uh, I met with uh, one of the building manager essentially of the property and uh, yeah I don't know if it's confidential or that's fine on, but yeah so you're a work in progress yeah okay thank you okay that's fine okay. Deputy Mayor Montoni. the only question I have Mr. Harvey that hasn't been asked already I didn't notice anything on uh, the airport in terms of transportation do you have anything to report with that at the moment in terms of our fuel consumption, uh, what our team is doing out there to help to assist um, our uh, water bombers, anything like that. Uh, is, uh, I noticed there was a tanker out there at one point. Is that, what is that for? If you can. Yeah, so the water bombers are in town. And uh, so normally we do the dips once a week or we may do them a couple of times if the spray planes are here, but uh, with the bombers, we did them right through the weekend, the dips to try and uh, stay on top of it uh, because uh, they can use a lot of fuel really quickly. And uh, so we're just trying to get our orders in kind of as quick as we can. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky situation because like the pilots themselves can't guarantee how long they'll be here. You know, they can't say we're going to be using this much fuel every day for the next 10 days because if we get a rain or if a fire someplace else takes precedence or they're based out another station, then they leave kind of thing. So we do now order fuel uh, with more in the tank than we normally would. Like when it's just normal helicopter operation, we let it get down to 5,000 liters or so and then get more so we can get a full tanker truck. Uh, both these guys get to order more often because like, each plane is for him, they can take 3,000 liters and uh, so you know, in a couple of trips they can drain us dry. But uh, we, and we talk to them and update them because they do have two more planes coming in. Uh, but they also have backups, like they're talking to Dauphin to make sure they have fuel so that like even if we keep our fuel tank right full, they fight a couple of fires, they can drain us right dry before the next truck gets here, so then they have operational plans. Okay, now we go to Dauphin and get fuel up there, but we're getting fuel to refill our tanks. That was a wonderful question, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I just got a put. Oh, sorry, there's a more? Yes, no, that was my question. Thank, Thank you very much. Also, why? Yeah, I just got a post uh, earlier from our MLA, and I'm thinking it's showing 10 or 12 fires within 100 kilometers of where we're sitting right now. That whole east side, there's at least 10 fires, so I, I would assume we would err on the side of having, I don't know how you have too much gas, have the tanks full as often as you can for the short term. Yeah. 
And we definitely do. There's just the fact that like in one day they can have us empty and we might not be able to get resupplied for a couple of days uh, because the fuel tanks or the trucks that fuel up everyone, they're going as quick as they can fuel up everyone because the water bombs are flying everywhere. Uh, so like I count for this last summer, two summers ago, they showed up, they drained our fuel because uh, they weren't aced at us even kind of thing, but they just showed up and all our fuel was gone because they had four planes. And so we did we order fuel, but it was going to be a couple of days before I could get here. So we let them know that and said, okay. And so they just fueled up and off for the next stop. So they're aware that there's a lag in the fuel just because there's not fuel tanker trucks that are available to come in. Uh, yeah. We'll have to keep your fingers crossed for rain on Friday. You can come Thursday if you want to. Uh, so, you know, just to answer another question, the tanker that's out there is a fire retardant foam that they use. That they, it's an additive that they pick up when they're fueling. And, and I just wanted to, uh, I guess, acknowledge Babcock Canada for selecting Swan River to be stationed. They're fighting fires like they're pretty too strategically placed right now, but they are fighting fires in southern Manitoba. In Eastern Manitoba, stationed out of Swan River, so just uh, acknowledge Babcock Canada for selecting Swan River to be stationed out. <clears throat> Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 721. Result of the April 2021 Swan River Handy Transit Ban Report be received. Moved by. Councilor White, second by Deputy Mayor Tony. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 722, result of the Protective Service Report for, I'm sorry, for the month of April 2021 be received. Moved by Councilor Wana Friesen, second by Deputy Mayor Tony. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.3, say, uh, sorry, council reports. Start with Councilor Friesen. Um, I'd just like to start off by thanking Jordan Rooks. I gave him a call the other day about our communities and blue pots. I know this is not that exciting, but anyway, he I asked him if he could do it sometime in the future and he phoned me and he had it done already. He moved the pot from 83 down to the Legion Park and picked up three stone ones and moved them over to the fire hall. So now the fire hall's got three stone ones. So thank you, Jordan. Uh, the hanging baskets are going to be uh, planted and coming sometime probably in a couple of weeks because it's too early. Um, we have a cemetery meeting planned for the 26th with Mr. Harvey, but he's gone. Um, just a question, I have three blue boxes at home. What could I do with them? You can bring them back here probably, don't you? We, we will accept them if people want to get rid of them, but... What do you do first? Storage. Recycling. Recycling. But I put it in the big guy. No. In your house, you're over for them. <laughs> um, I talked to Mary Mitchell today about Manitoba Age Friendly and um, she gave me a few suggestions on some of the things that we could possibly do in Swan River. One of them I will have a chat with the Deputy Mayor. It had to do with changing font sizes on store pegs on shelves. Okay. Just a thought, like how often do you see people trying to get down to read them, me included. Um, I don't know what kind of expense that would entail. Just a thought. And uh, I also talked to her about uh, looking into the uh, low power doors. That was my thing. She gave me a few places to call. So I'm looking at 
you want to go next? No, I just a, a response to Council Friesen's question. Uh, just in regards to shelf labels, I can't uh, divulge a lot of information, but we are working on um, different methods and what that might look like in the future is much different than what you see now. So um, that that is already in the works and uh, something new will be coming down the pipe. That's great. Thank you. Um, thank you. I'm done. As it is. Uh, Councillor Morial. Uh, not much, just the uh, last uh, call meeting, uh, we uh, made some significant progress on our strategic plan, and basically uh, nothing else is up to that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Tony. Um, my first one is, uh, uh, Mr. Poole did steal my thunder on it, but it was to, again, on behalf of uh, the chair of the airport commission and as well from this council to thank you to Babcock Canada for selecting Swan River and utilizing our resources that we have here. Um, and again, with the airport commission, I think that we are going to see some changes that are going to be positive in that uh, few, in the regard of fueling. So I'm looking forward to those changes and uh, it should be a good um, feather in the cap for Babcock to continue to want to be here. My next uh, bit is District Rec. We had our final meeting. Um, district did the District Rec committee is officially dissolved. Um, there is the seed money of thirty thousand dollars for an event um, regarded to in regards to um, recreation. And the remainder was put into around the 69,000. There still is a little bit to finish up that was being put into um, um, the Community Foundation. Thank you. Um, so that is all finished up. There is just a few um, last minute items that our CFO, Ganita, will be putting in, and then the remainder balance will be added to that pot of money there. Um, other than that, that's all I have to report. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council White. Uh, May the 12th, we, uh, UCN, I went to a, a digital campfire. We resumed a handful of people throughout uh, the area. And, and it's very uh, enlightening. And I, I just keep thinking of wonderful things UCN does for our community. Nursing jumps out at me amongst many others. But they, I would encourage our listing viewing public to go to their website and see some of the things they do. Construction, computer courses, home building, truck drivers, welding, office assistants. And all those people that get trained and stay in our community, specifically the nurses, which is a priority for all of us, is all made possible by, by, by UCN. So I want to thank them for the commitment to our community. And we're, we're working on the possibility of a dental assistant model. So uh, Dr. Claire is in town for four weeks, so we hope to meet with him soon and look at that to training people. And there aren't many places in the province that train people to be dental assistants. It's certainly a need. On the 17th, I had a uh, Zoom meeting with Prairie Mountain Health, and uh, it appear we're going to have a, a new CAO, CEO, in uh, the very near future, and Penny will be uh, stepping down. And it was apparent also throughout the whole meeting that COVID is still here in one form or the other. And as soon as we get our shots, that will be better. And we can, as we are here, we distance, we wear a mask when we move around, and we wash uh, regularly. So I encourage that. Uh, Councillor, Deputy Mayor, when Tony alluded to the meeting with the RCMP uh, a week or so ago, and we took copious notes, but I couldn't remember it, or many of them. So I just uh, went back and dug them up, so I thought perhaps I'd quickly share them. Uh, COVID obviously is a huge issue with the RCMP. They deal with people who are uh, down and out, and uh, they risk every day, so I, I thank the RCMP for doing the things they do. Uh, poverty is a big issue, and that's why some of these people are where they are. It appears our request to change the hours is probably not going to happen in the short term. 
the RCMP, uh, they, they spoke so highly of our hospital staff and their inter, interrelations with the hospital and how they work collaboratively and they look at new ideas how to deal with the people. There's still an issue with the transportation of the bad guys and the bad girls in our community. The RCMP are leaving town and waiting for somebody to get after and go off and whether they're not here or they're going to Brandon or somewhere farther. I thought we had that uh, done with government a year or two ago, but that's still a, a big issue. Uh, lots of big math issues we lost, that, uh, we understand that. Some stuff I can't tell, and as I alluded to last time, I hope the new staff sergeants will be here in June, and I assume we might talk to them again about the possibility of shifting their work hours uh, where we think is better. So that was a really good meeting, and thank you for reminding me that I took the notes, uh, your worship, Junior, and Deputy Mayor. That's it, thank you. That's it. Okay. Councilor uh, Delorier, report. Okay. Uh, I guess for me, I guess, you know, it's been mentioned already about Babcock Canada, uh, Canada being here, and it kind of makes me think back a, a, a number of years ago when Councillor Brad Wyatt was uh, was kind of pulling that horn and saying, like, why don't we have the, the water bomber stationed in Swan River versus in, say, Thompson or the Paul when most of those lakes were all froze over. and and something that I, I ran into him today, and obviously he didn't see the bombers there in the last little while because he, he brought up the same thing. He says, why are we not lobbying for these guys to be here? And I said, you know what, if they're here. I said, uh, I think that Council Morio kind of pushed that, that ticket a little bit, the last little bit, and and, uh, and so forth, and, 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 and whoever else had done that. But definitely, uh, it's great to have them in the community not only you know using our you know services and being here to protecting you know our natural resources that we have here uh, is so critical but for them to be on standby to help whatever part of the, of the province and and, uh, and right now we can obviously see how much of a, a need that we need to have them here in this dry time and on that I thought you know also with our our firefighters from our Swan Valley Fire Department our Swan River Fire Department, they've been working a lot of hours here in the last uh, uh, week. I don't know if it was Council Morio has said that, uh, or maybe it was the Chief of said, you know, 13 calls in how many days? And, you know, and I think uh, just the other day they were in, up in, uh, well, today they're up in Bell Site area, east of Bell Site. They're uh, Birch River one day, north of Bullsman, and then they were all the way down the Harlington Road. They're in Swan River. They're just, when you, if you're outside in your backyard, like I was yesterday afternoon, you hear these sirens going, they're going all over the place. You know that these guys are going out to protect, uh, you know, people's possessions and, uh, and they're trying to, uh, you know, the devastation what fires can do to property. And we're so grateful to have them. Um, and, and I guess, you know, at the same time, I, I hope that everyone takes the time to uh, be smart about open fires and, 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 and educate people on, on not to uh, burn because right now it's, it's just too uh, tinder and uh, it's, it's, uh, it can be very costly to, to anybody, not only our municipality but to what our forestry sector cannot afford to have and, and lose such a, a great resource uh, at this time. Uh, I wanted to state also that uh, because of COVID-19, some things have changed a little bit, and um, you know we, we've had in the past the uh, the, the, uh, the medical students come up, the doctors come up uh, once in a while. They did the uh, uh, rural week for doctors, and they're going to continue that again this uh, this uh, in the next week, I guess it is. So there is a group that is going to be entertaining medical students coming to Swan River and trying to entice them to look at. Uh, making this their place to, to live and to practice, and, and that'll be happening uh, here in the next uh, week, like I said. And lastly, I guess uh, Council Morio touched up on that, or I can't remember, maybe it was one of the other councillors said that, you know, uh, we had our latest strategic plan here in the last couple weeks, and I think that we made some really good inroads on that. I know that there's still some paperwork that we all have to do to, uh, to finish it up, but we are far closer to completing a strategic plan than we ever have before. And I, and I think that we have to thank the whole team. And you know, administration has been there with us and, 
and uh, working with uh, all of council on those uh, evenings that we have designated for strategic planning. So I'm so grateful and I'm sure that the rest of council is too because it's a goal that we we, uh, we have when we first started this uh, term and I know that we're coming to the to the you know the near the you know the, the latter quarter of this uh, term but uh, definitely we will have this done and, and, and set the uh, this community or this administration in the right direction for not only for the vision of this council but for future councils as well. So that's it with myself. Uh, Mr. Poole, anything from you? Uh, not much, but just to expand on my written report, uh, a few things to be coming to council with chronological list of purchase service correspondence and uh, the strap plan summary document will be coming this week and uh, just to discuss an item on next Tuesday's Cal meeting just to prepare yourselves to uh, uh, it'll be pretty grassroots with a proposal for Main Street uh, I think that needs to be a discussion we'll, we'll have to discuss next Tuesday but uh, yeah other than that I held a meeting with the clerks just to go over not in detail, but the strat plan, the process, what we hope to get out of it, our objectives, and as well the, the 2021 budget. I think it's important that they know uh, where we're going, and, and that was very much appreciated on their end. But okay. other than that, all right. So, all right, then we'll move on then uh, to new business. Oh, sorry, I had one more question. Okay. I was just reviewing. Uh, it's to Mr. Poole, just in regards to um, the tanks in for the airport commission. I know that we're going to see steel increasing at approximately 18%. Are we going to be seeing that on this, or have we seen that already? And how quickly um, do we need to secure this proposal to the commission? I am... I am trying to keep our prices that were given to me in March uh, so that I can order them right away. So I may have to actually call on you. I gonna, as soon as I get that yes, I'll be probably getting a meeting really Perfect. fast. Thank you. Yes, I know, uh, and just in a couple other projects I've been dealing with, I've got uh, suppliers telling me 18% is coming in the next, of an increase in steel in the next two to three weeks. So we're talking a massive amount in this case, yeah. and that could be detrimental to our budget. Sorry, no, I'll finish it, thank you. Fun, but, all right, so then we'll move on. Uh, new business in 8.1. We're at sections 10.1 of the Municipal Councils and the School Board Elections Act requires each municipality to appoint a senior election officer <laughs> as an SEO who will be responsible to manage and conduct all aspects of municipal elections. And whereas the municipality is required to establish the rate of remuneration for an SEO, and now therefore be resolved that Maxine Zamzel is hereby appointed to the position SEO for the town of Swan River. Now furthermore, be it resolved that Maxine Zamzel will be paid the following rates of remuneration to perform the duties of SEO as set out the Municipal Council and School Board Elections Act. $1,500 per year in the year, year uh, of a regular election, payable in one installment after the election is completed. $500 per by election, payable in one installment after the by election is completed, and $250 per year in, one, in a year where there is neither a regular election nor a by election payable in one installment on the first day of November. Council shall reimburse SEO at the rate of 50 cents per kilometer for each kilometer actually traveled in the performance of the duties SEO. The SEO is required to record and present travel expense sheet to the council for the review and approval prior to the payment being issued for mile, mileage expense. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.2. Resolved the Town of Swan River Council request the senior elections official to hold a by election within the Town of Swan River for the seat of councillor. 
Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. So just on that, uh, a date will then be set then after that goes to? Tentatively, it's August 11th. It may be August 11th, or is that what you're thinking? That's tentative. We have our calendar set for that date. It'll okay. be official by the NCO uh, formally. Okay, so that's how meeting. that works. Okay. Okay, very good. Result that sewer and pole and mechanical be awarded the boiler replacement and access door project of the Swan Valley Aquatic Center. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.4. Result of the Town of Swanover continue to act as the service provider for the work crew program from 2021 through 2022 fiscal years. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. This is a really great program that we have and we're very lucky to have. What was all the work on this? Sorry. Ten point one. Resolve that accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number two seven five three nine to number two seven five nine four, totaling ninety eight thousand six hundred eighty eight and fifty six cents, as listed on Schedule A. Checks number twenty seven five seven one, voided due to incorrect amount. Uh, payroll accounts checks number 4855 to number 4860 and direct deposit totaling $89,073.81 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits in the amount of $397.23 as per Schedule C and, do, and direct deposits totaling $15,230.99 as listed on Schedule D. Move by. Councilor Morial, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion. Councilor Delorier. Uh, 27551, uh, April 19th, $29 over limit fee. What, what system do we have? How, uh, what system do we have in place for people to not go to have those fees on there? Well, we only have, I guess we have a order new credit cards, so it's one credit card is being used for multiple departments. It's a five thousand dollar limit. Oh, okay. So it's um, are you able to look online to see where, where what the balance is at or is there is that oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, I guess I don't want them to do I, I don't I don't know, I guess I'll leave it up to you but I I know it's a small amount but it just kinda of irks me. Yeah, yeah. It irks me when it happens to me personally. So yeah. no myself it's, and the CFO can look at how things are paid and you know, frequency of, of how they're paid. When mm -hmm. and if we have to turn that up, we will. And I mean, I've never seen that on there before, so I'm, it's not like that happens all the time. But no. just going to be aware of it. Council Morio. Uh, I think part of that was I had the same thing there, but I was just going to suggest that administration uh, do a review of our um, Visa card there, and I know we are seeing a lot more visa purchases there that we may need to look at uh, upping the limit on that um, so that uh, we avoid these uh, peddly little charges uh, for it because I, I know sometimes it's hard to get the, the balance paid off in our where our accounting system is but uh, if we can look at a increase in balance on that so that uh, we don't forget these because I think this is the third time in a few months that we've seen this or I've seen it anyway. We, we have the ability to have four Visa credit cards, but with the staff turnover and vacant positions, we're down to two. When we get back to the full complement of staff with, with four credit cards, then there won't be an issue. Thank you. 
So, Mr. Ganita, are, are these four credit cards attached to one account, or are they four separate accounts? They, they each have the, their own credit limit. Okay, thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Staring. Tab two, result financial statements for the months ended, sorry, for the four months ended, ending April 30th, 2021, be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed, it's carried. 10-3, whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from the Mantle of Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations made by Mantle of Assessment Services on May the 6th, 2021, to be made to the 2021 business tax rule with the resulting increase being 152 and 95 cents. Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10-4. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act, Clause 252E, and set the fees and charges for the work under Clause 252-1A of the Act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $2,637.42. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in that manner under some sections 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to the property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective June 1st. 2021. Resolution is moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10-5. Resolved that the invoice received from the RCMP for January to March municipal policing for the amount of $272,273 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by uh, Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11 bylaws, 11.1. Resolved that bylaw 7, 2021, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, Swan River to establish a landfill capital and closure reserve fund be read a second time. Moved by Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.2, result of the bylaw 4, 2021, being the bylaw enforcement, sorry, being the bylaw enforcement bylaw be read a second time. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.3. Resolve the bylaw 4, 2021, be the bylaw enforcement bylaw, be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. 
Council Morial discussion. Recorded vote, all in favor? It's carried. Four, resolve the bylaw five, 2021, being a bylaw for fire prevention and emergency services, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.5. It was all the bylaw 5, 2021, being a bylaw, bylaw for fire prevention and emergency services, be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. Eleven six. Result of bylaw 8, 2021, being a bylaw for election and campaign expenses and contributions, be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Morio. Um, Mr. Poole, um What's the changes on this from what we currently have on the bylaw, or is it we just have to redo it because of the upcoming uh, vacancy election? No, I did change 5.3, and uh, it is uh, for candidates' financial statements to be uh, filed 210 days after the election. We did have some options prior, but that just it simplifies the bylaw. It's what's required by the province, and uh, it's acceptable. Okay, thank you. I just didn't, it's not highlighted. That's why I didn't see it. Thank you. Sorry about that. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Uh, we have no notice of motion. Resolve that pursuant to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Municipal Act Council go to the committee and close the meeting to the public. I also discuss is uh, utility and I think shared services also is one item that I want to bring up in there. I have one more if that's possible. What's that? uh, just the uh, Conrad's apartment structure. I know it was in camera last time okay. and I'm not sure if it can be answered without Mr. Fedorchik, but yeah. maybe perhaps somebody else from administration. Okay, so uh, all in favor? I'm sorry, who moves it? I need a mover. <laughs> Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? We're in camera. Uh, we Resolved that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9.26 p.m. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're adjourned.